Yeah, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Huntsville for a minute, right? So you're in Alaska. Mm-hmm. You identify Huntsville as a market that may have opportunity to wholesale deals. How did you pick Huntsville? Was it just random? Did you do some work? How did that choice come about? So um, I was in a mastermind for military real estate investors and a, a partner and I, we were battle buddies and we decided, you know, we both want to learn how to do do deals outside of our local market, which meant just identifying deals and be able to, um, yeah, basically identify deals outside of our local market. For him, he was in Vegas and that's where he was investing. For me, I was in Alaska, that's where I was investing. So we decided to look at a variety of metrics, the typical ones everyone looks at, right? Economic factors, crime, um, obviously on bigger pockets, it was a trending market. Um, it was one that wholesalers did like, and we figured the least amount of risk to learn a market was to actually try to wholesale good deals there to see if we yeah. ever wanted to buy there, we might as well see if we can structure great deals that other people are willing to buy. And all we're spending costs on is marketing and time. We're not mm-hmm. like putting a huge down payment on a property or anything like that. So it was a really good entry for us to learn how to do that and just learn the process of wholesaling overall with, you know, setting up your CRM and uh, how to identify uh, leads and skip trace them and then put them into your CRM and then contact them and follow up and all these things that, you know, um, the big one was following up with your leads and understanding your pipeline takes a while to build and you have to continue touching them. You know, you have to keep contacting these um, potential sellers. So it was a great learning experience with little to no risk. I mean, it was some financial and time risk, but it was nothing compared to buying a property out of state for the first time, in my opinion. So did you have the same kind of success ratio, the first 250 out, you got you know 50 phone calls or what was that like starting up in, in Huntsville? So we were doing texts and mm-hmm. uh, calls. So much worse um, return on those. I'm much cheaper marketing than it is uh, letters, but um, sure. much worse return. I think we were sending out maybe 250 texts per day, maybe getting a less than 10% reply rate. And you, you know, a fraction of those were actually somewhat positive moving the needle. Mm-hmm. A lot of tire kickers when you're reaching out to direct sure. to sell with high equity, because if they're not motivated to sell, they shouldn't, right? Like right. I always tell people, if you can, if you can keep this property or sell it conventionally, you should go that route. Or if you want to keep it as a rental, go that route. But if not, then mm-hmm. maybe maybe I have a solution for you that, you know, maybe selling the property might be your best bet. But um, with these ones, I don't know if you've ever uh, reached out direct to seller, uh, but you get, it, it makes you tough. Uh, you, you just get blasted and cussed at and everything. And I get it. It is annoying. Um, but we were trying to um, learn and it's hard to say, like less than 1%. Um, and we... In the six months we did that, which now in hindsight, I realize it takes six months just to fill your pipeline. But then in the six months we did that, we generated 60K and three deals. So that was great. We learned we can find deals. And we were super thoughtful because both my business partner and I were um, were buy and hold investors. So when we were structuring these deals, we weren't just focusing on the equity piece, but we were basically analyzing it as, all right, you're going to get this discount, this is your cash. When you cash out refinance in the future, because we're assuming you're going to burr it, you're also going to make this cash on cash return. So we were giving them the perfect deal. And we didn't right. realize how perfectly we were serving it up to people. Of course, they wanted to buy these deals. In hindsight, I wish I bought them all. <laughs> infinite returns on those. But you know, um, yeah. it was a great learning experience overall, especially just going through the process of wholesaling and learning just how tough that is. Um, yeah. This is this is just examples of, of people get interested in things and then they stop when it gets hard. You guys didn't stop, right? I can only imagine the first, you know, hundred times you got cussed out by someone before you build up that callus and was like, oh, on to the next. Um, you know, putting money out for six months, you know, before you see returns and, and things of that nature. So, okay. 